evening, I'm Miles Mansour. And this is Andrew. And welcome to News Night in Canada. On tonight's segment, we have the energy field cathode ray tube. Andrew, please give us a history on this topic. After me and Miles did some research, we understand that the first uh, cathode ray tube scanning device was found by um, Carl Ferdinand Braun. However, most of the experiments were did by J.J. Uh, Thompson. These experiments uh, prove how the cathode ray tube actually worked. However, the first ever cathode ray tube uh, device was uh, invented by Carl. After that, in 1858, Julius Plucker showed that cathode rays actually bent under the influence of uh, a magnet. This led to the 1897 discovery that cathode rays are actually composed of electrons. In 1876, Eugene Goldstein gave uh, the name cathode ray. Um, and then in 1883, Heinrich Hertz shows that cathode rays are not deflected by electrically charged metal plates, which, uh, which would seem to indicate that cathode rays cannot be charged particles. However, it was later found not to be true. In 1886, Eugene Goldstein then observes that a cathode ray tube produces radiation that travels in opposite directions, away from the anode that is uh, the one end of a cathode ray tube. And then in 1894, J.J. Thompson announces that he has found the velocity of a cathode ray in 1994, J.G. Thompson announces that he has found the velocity of the cathode rays to be less than uh, that of the light. In 1895, Jean-Baptiste Perrin shows that cathode rays deposited negative electric charge uh, by the impact. This showed that um, cathode rays actually are composed of uh, negative electric charge, which are the electrons. Back to you, Mars. Okay, Ian, history's done. Let's get back to our on-site reporter, Mohammed Bohora, in Switzerland at a high-level research center. Thank you, Maz. We are standing outside the research center in Switzerland. Now let's go inside to see how the cathode tube experiment actually works with Dr. Butt. This is a cathode ray tube. What it essentially is, is a vacuum chamber. There are no gases inside this glass tube. The only thing we have are two electrodes, one is called a cathode and one is called an anode, and a fluorescent screen in the background, coated with some kind of fluorescent material. When the power supply is turned on, we will observe that a beam that causes the fluorescent screen to glow in a nice straight line. We call that a cathode ray because it emanates and, and, and shows that the cathode is shot across to the anode. J.J. Thompson took a look at this. We didn't, he didn't really understand what was happening. Electricity was going inside one, one end and coming out the other but there was nothing inside to conduct the electricity. So he decided to apply a magnetic field to this cathode ray. We will apply one pole to this cathode ray to see what happens. As we can observe, the ray is being repelled. When you flip the magnet around, it starts attracting the ray. And if it's been attracted with one end and repelled with the other, that only means it has a charge. The one that pushes it away is a negative charge. This, can, this, this tells us that the ray is a negatively charged particle. J.J. Thompson 
did a charge to mass ratio of these particles and he found that these particles were about 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. At the time, that was very profound. Dalton said that, if, are there any particles smaller than an atom? No. But now J.J. Thompson found a, something 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. Since the hydrogen atom is the smallest atom, and we found two, something 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom, this this means that we are we have found our first subatomic particle which is called the electron. Wow, that was exciting. As you can see, the cathode tube helped inventing new technologies and took it to a new level. For example, it helped make in display technologies such as L C D, minor TV, plasma displays, and many more. Most importantly, cathode tube have been used as a memory device. A tube called Williams tube, which was cathode tube used as a computer memory to electronically store binary data to the computer. And what is more significant about it is that it's the first random access store data. The important about it is that it was the first random access digital storage device. And this proves that cathode tube plays an important role in, in contributing technological world. One of the most important contributions it made was making TV, which changed our lives and made it much more easier to socialize. This is how cathode tube helped invent new technologies. Thank you, Ahura. Now you know more about the cathode ray tube, its history, and how it works. Sorry to interrupt this message, but we have breaking news. The CIA has finally captured Osama Bin Laden! Yeah! The following images are disturbing. Viewer's discretion is advised. This is 3 2 Echo. We are in sector. Gunner up, scanning with funnels. Have visual on enemy on the vicinity of the MSR. Have copy over. Roger, 3 2. Goliath copies all. Go ahead. Roger. We have a BMP 2 at map grid 315298. The target is surrounded by multiple personnel carrying small. Finally, justice has been served for all the victims' families who lost their loved ones in the 9-11. Well, folks, that's it for tonight's segment. Have a good night, and this has been us on Newsnight in Canada. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Yeah. Hey. Good evening. I'll ma- <laughs> Say that, say that again. Don't be all confident. Huh? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Thank you, Mas. Well, we are located outside the research center in Switzerland. Now let's go inside with Dr. Okay, let me see the video. Let me see if we can see the rain. Stop it.